Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. She is a 2016 Olympian, 2015 Pan American Games medalist. Uh, today, we are sitting down with Canada's own Rachel Nichol. Hi. <laughs> And uh, we wanted to talk to you and, and just get the perspective of Canadian swimmers on the heels of the news that your <laughs> what was what was once the 2020 Olympic trials uh, is being pushed back again. It was scheduled to be uh, in May from May 24th to 28th. Now has been pushed back even further to June 19th to 23rd. Uh, you all found about out about this on a conference call on Wednesday. Um, can you just kind of tell me your initial reaction and did you expect anything like this, um, leading up to this news? Yeah, I think the initial reaction and from other people that I've, that I've talked to is just that we're tired and, and emotionally quite exhausted from, um, <clears throat> starting again, stopping again, starting again. And, uh, originally trials were booked for, April too, and then they got rescheduled again to May, and then now it's <laughs> now it's June. So I, it's just it's just tiring. Uh, as as everybody probably who listens to this knows that swimming in and of itself is is very uh, physically <laughs> taxing. Obviously, the training and mentally taxing, and then on top of that, we have a pandemic and Olympic year, and so the emotional toll that it's taking on on all of us, I think, is is pretty grand. <laughs> Do you want to use that word? Um, and 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 yeah, we were. I was anticipating something like this happening because of the state that Ontario is in. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly, you know, like what was going to happen. I thought maybe then things would be moved to earlier in June, maybe because they had Swimming Canada had set up sort of another meet um, in earlier in June for after the May trials. And so I thought maybe that like that would be the only thing. But uh, no, it's it's like basically a full month later. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was I, I, I kind of anticipated it this whole this whole year has been about adaptability and and that's fair enough but it's been it's it's hard when it's just this perpetual cycle and and you do things to make good choices every single day and uh and try to keep yourself in good a good mental standpoint and then and then it's just this endless cycle of 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 no <laughs> basically all year long yeah <laughs> Yeah. And, and to top it off, um, I think you mentioned, you know, just <laughs> hours after that, um, Winnipeg where you live got even, even more restrictions, um, for generally for COVID. Is that right? I'm in Alberta actually in, in Lethbridge. Oh, yeah. My mistake. So, no, no, that's okay. Um, I, yeah, we got the next day. Uh, so we got told on Wednesday about Olympic trials and then on Thursday about, um, yeah, new, new restrictions coming into place. Luckily, it doesn't affect our small Olympic trials training group because we have an exemption in our province. So, so that's good. But for basically everybody else, like our club was was training a little bit. And so we're the university athletes. And now they don't get to do that. So it's, it's hard to see that too, because it's such a frustrating standpoint for them as well. And when you're friends with them, that, that um, impacts you too and and it's just kind of a total with it because our coach is the coach of the horns like the university team as well as the club team and so then he's got to kind of like readjust everything for everyone so it's a it's a it's a big thing yeah wow yeah that's that's a lot <clears throat> and and like you said I think everyone has experienced this this year but um certainly that's not what you want <laughs> to see when you were at the time, uh, you know, less than a month out from, from your trials meet, yeah. how does that, you know, now that you've had 48 hours to process that information, how does that affect, you, you know, your preparation and training moving into the now 
June trials. Right. I well, <laughs> to be honest, I was pretty bitter about it all, <laughs> and quite, quite, quite like it's hard not to be pessimistic about things when, again, it's just it's just uh, so many barriers along the way for so long, and and so I had a good conversation actually just a couple hours before this this podcast, and maybe that's a good thing with my. Um, with my psychologist <laughs> and uh, and just uh, like, so how do we move forward? What are we gonna, how are we gonna kind of view the next chunk of time? Because it, it is, it's more work. Uh, we were getting ready to go into taper and, and I was really looking forward to giving my body a little bit of a break. And so now we can't, we're not doing that. So uh, so um, the strategy moving forward is, is to kind of just decompress that we're not, I have the rest of the week off. So no, no swimming today and no swimming tomorrow, which is nice. And I can just, and we're going to kind of reset on Monday. So that's nice to just kind of get back and, and do some things that you like at home with like, I have my plants and like gardening and stuff like that. That's getting nicer out. So things like that um, to make, make you feel a little bit better. And, and, and then, yeah, moving forward, like now that trials, like trials for us Canadians is always in April. And so we always have a pretty big chunk of time between trials and then uh, the, whatever games it might be or worlds or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's, it's trials is close to when the Olympics will actually be happening. And then swimming Canada also said if Ontario is still in lockdown by the time the end of June rolls around, or it doesn't seem possible that we can do the event there, they're looking to secure another location um, in the United States. And so maybe we'll be doing it there. And so that's kind of another option. Um, and then, and so uh, we're kind of talking through this, me and my psychologist and, and, and because the trials and the Olympics are pretty close together, we're thinking maybe it's a good idea to, you know, and not to like, um, you know, jinx anything, but just to start to look forward to the Olympics and the actual games, because it's been so focused on, on trials and it's just so intense. And so it's just, it would just be nice to think about something else. <laughs> And not and not you know not put the the cart before the horse or anything. You still have to qualify and all of that. But just to kind of get an idea, what what will that be like? What will that look like? Have a bit of excitement around. Like it will obviously be very very different than what Rio was from from my experience. Uh, and and just like yeah, we'll like kind of think about something else <laughs> because it's just been trials 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 for for so long that uh, that that's sort of the strategy we're going to have moving forward. Um, just to put a little bit of an excitement into training because it is so hard and have something else to look, to look forward to. Uh, it'll be an emotional process no matter how it turns out. So uh, um, just, yeah, having something to look forward to kind of is the, is the idea. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that, that makes me wonder um, you, you mentioned <laughs> this is way different than um, the lead up to trials or the Olympic games in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what what was your lead up like to those 2016 olympic trials um because i'm i'm guessing it was maybe a lot different than you know what what the lead up has been to um for this trials in the last five years in the last two years in the last one year mm -hmm. uh not only because of the pandemic but just because you know you 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 have made the team once and i'm sure that brings a different set of personal expectations mm-hmm yeah, it does. And I, I feel very thankful that I have made the team already. And I think that that is allevi alleviating some pressure and some stress from myself, uh, because I have had that experience, and, I, and nothing can take that away from me. So that does help. <laughs> it gives me something to kind of cling to. But yeah, the, the preparation has been night and day uh obviously with and even regardless of the pandemic it, it has been very different uh getting ready for 2016 i was fresh out of university at smu and had just moved back to uh to lethbridge my hometown where i am now and and i graduated in december and so it was really good timing for april trials because it was like three months. I wasn't in school anymore. Woohoo, kind of thing. And I came back every summer to train with my club team here. So it wasn't like I was going into a completely different environment. I knew what I was getting into and just really like honing things in. 
uh, for those for those three months, I guess it was three or four months for trials. And then the, that ended up going really well. The year before I had qualified for Pan Ams and made my first senior national team. So I had confidence going into that year uh, for 2016. And, and, and then the, like, it honestly was like, <laughs> in comparison to this, it was so smooth sailing, <laughs> you know, I'm sure a day to day, it was, it was hard. Uh, training is hard, like I say, obviously, but, but in, in, and there's doubts and everything in preparing, but in terms of just uncontrollable things in our environment, uh, it was, it's obviously not as easy to control things now as it is, as it was then because of the everything else that's going on. So yeah. And then, and then getting ready, like I wasn't sure if I was going to go for another quadrennial after Rio. Um, I, I, even in probably like 2017 and 2018, I wasn't entirely sure, but I stumbled upon a, a lovely shoulder injury in 2018 and just started <laughs> not swimming well and so uh I felt like by the time that I sort of got things sorted with that it took a really long time for it to get diagnosed and kind of get back on the right page with things with the shoulder and by that time it was 2019 and I thought well I kind of owe it to myself at this point in time to just see it through for 2020 uh, I was training in Calgary at the time and then I decided to move back home with my coach here that I was training with for 2016 and 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 give it another like really good shot and uh and then we were yeah getting we were about 10 days away from leaving for trials in 2020 and and about 13 or 14 days away from when I would have been racing and and everything shut down so um yeah, even the even the shoulder injury, like it was it was it was hard. I felt like after Rio, I was like, this is gonna be great. Like I made it through the tunnel to the other side. I've I've got, I've struggled. I've I've paid my dues, kind of a thing. And I thought it would be smooth sailing after that because I was wise and <laughs> all this experience, whatever. And uh, and then ended up being uh, yeah, like four or five years of just lots of hardship and. Um, so um, one way or another, I'm proud that I've, I've made it through this far and, and made it to this point. So, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a lot. And like you said, to decide to, to keep going for another quad, I mean, it's four, four years that turns into five years. I think it's been a long time for a lot of athletes and it's, it's kind of what I've heard and man, that's, that's just a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of waiting. <laughs> it's a lot of waiting. Right. Yeah. And especially like you said, if, if there are hardships intertwined, if there's injuries, I mean, have, um, has there been points leading up, especially in the last couple of years where, um, in practice or in competitions, you're like, okay, this is, this is going really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question because no, like not, not as much as I would like <laughs> for sure. And definitely, like I say, in, in 2016, I, I was the year before that I had my best NCAA appearance basically and, and competition. I made the final in the hundred breaststroke, got a bunch of best times uh, in yards, which was really awesome. I made my first senior national team the year before was able to go to world and, and took, took, chunks of time off of my best time uh, at that point as well so like I say I had tons of tons of confidence going into 2016 with having done the year before whereas this was like even even going back to to 2019 like I went to nationals and and I was a few months after I had moved back to Lethbridge and had been training here and I was like yeah like I want to try to go like a 106 again and I ended up going like I don't know like 108 and it's like totally totally off the mark uh and um and and then I even getting ready for um for going into 2020 before the pandemic hit there wasn't there was some glimmers of like hope and 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 good swims and races and but there were also a lot of, of not so good ones mixed in there. It wasn't super consistent as, as I would have liked. And, and so that I, my confidence just wasn't very good, um, even in 2019. So it, it's, 
I don't know, it's, it's been hard the past year, but it's probably been kind of good for me to have the time to, to settle down in Lethbridge again, get some, it can take months to kind of adjust to the new training environment and the new training. And I think that that has been good for me the past um, few months in training have been feeling really, really good. Uh, I felt I felt really good leading into trials for when 2020, when it was supposed to happen, I felt really good, but I think I feel better now. Um, it's kind of hard to think back then because so, it feels like so much has happened and it's been so long, but I, I feel like I'm in a good spot, but again, like we haven't had any races. I haven't, I wasn't in ISL. I didn't get to see any performances from myself there. We haven't had any real swim meets in Alberta because of the lockdown or anywhere else. Um, so it, yeah, you can train and train as much as you want <laughs> and have good times in training, but you don't really know um, what that will kind of look like when push comes to shove in a training or in a racing environment. So it would, do I wish that I would yeah, have some more races under my belt uh, to see where we're at? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but training's going good, so we're gonna hold on to that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, did, did you do ISL in season one? No, I haven't. I didn't do ISL at all, actually. No. Okay. What, was was that um, a conscious decision on your behalf? Yeah, I not that I was approached or anything, but I I don't like traveling. <laughs> like I just I don't, and and honestly, like it's really cool to watch, and I and it looks like so much fun, and I've heard such good things about ISL, but I I've been in um circumstances before where it's racing kind of back to back to back and and in the US you know you have dual meets every single weekend and I'm just getting older and I it's just not really something that I was very interested in it was just another thing that I think was going to add more stress because of the the travel the unknowns I sometimes it's hard for me to make friends um things like that that are just it's like a, like a kind of personal and so I I yeah it was it was not like they were like begging me to come join them or anything but I I I would just wasn't there was nothing really about it for myself that I thought would serve me ex really well I think that the um pros didn't weigh outweigh the cons for me at the time and uh so yeah yeah. yeah. Makes, makes total sense. Uh, <clears throat> and so, you know, in, instead of that, you, you were, you were at home in the, in the fall uh, of 2020, how are you managing that time? Were you able to get in competitions at all? What did we do? It feels like so long ago. Uh, <laughs> <It does>. <laughs> <laughs> did we have competitions? No, we did like not, we had time trials. Uh, like just within our club and and little things like that but no no swim meets no like sanctioned stuff no people coming from other cities or anything like that nothing like that no um, we had yeah just like it would be like Peter our coach would pick sort of a weekend or um, a couple of days and that'd be like that's when we're gonna have a, a meet and that'll be um, just within our group and, and and we would do things like that which is fine but again it just it doesn't doesn't simulate the same environment and it's hard to get excited <laughs> the same way and and things like that but yeah we did have a few of those opportunities and we're still trying to do that mm -hmm. yeah um go, going back to um chasing this olympic dream which you would you'd already made a reality in 2016 and you went to two you swam in two finals in the hundred breast and in the medley relay. Mm -hmm. um, having had that, having had that performance at an Olympics, do you think that motivated th that affected your motivation heading into these Olympics, either positively or negatively um, knowing that you had had, you had achieved what you did in 2016? Hmm. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I don't think if I had not made the team in 2016, I don't think I would still probably be swimming by this point in time. So I think that that's probably a positive because it's just like, like what, once you finish university, it's like, it's, it's just a bit harder. And in Canada, like in the US, I think that they have a lot more pro swimming teams, but, but in Canada, they, it's, it's a bit 
more uh, narrow. There just isn't as many options. And so it's a bit more challenging to, to be able to do that. And, and financially, <laughs> it's, it's harder. And uh, so, yeah, after university had finished, if I hadn't made the team in 2016, I don't think that I probably would have kept swimming for as, like I probably would have been done in 2015 after I finished my university degree. Um, so I think that that's, I don't know. I think that's a good thing that I've, I've kept going. Uh, it's a, had a positive impact and it, it was very, as well as the Olympics could have gone for me then they did go like uh, the, uh, there's so many other Olympians and people's experience at the Olympics that are, are devastating. And so I'm, I'm thankful that my, my experience was very, very, very positive. And, and I do, I do think that it did give me uh, some motivation, but I don't really view uh swimming and like my life <laughs> and very far in advance uh i i usually just take things three months at a time four months at a time uh kind of in in, in like swimming cycles basically or or as semesters because i've always been a student uh and so i i i after rio i really did think that i was just gonna take it a year at a time see how things work see how things went. Um, and I, one of the goals that I had for myself was to make uh, every possible national team that you can make, I wanted to make. And I did achieve that by the time 2018 rolled around. So back in 2016, I thought, oh, that might be a nice place to retire in 2018 because then you would have accomplished what you wanted to and made all the teams like the Commonwealth Games team and the Pan Packs. And, and I did that, but again, with the shoulder, I swam so embarrassingly bad at those swim meets that I, I, I didn't think that it would be doing myself or honoring myself or doing myself justice to, to stop on that kind of a note with swimming, considering how long I had been in this sport, considering all that I'd been through. So I think more than anything, um, honestly, the shoulder injury was probably the thing that, uh, had a negative impact, but it ended up pushing me to this point. That's really interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> because yeah, like, like, like you said, 2018, you, you were going to achieve that personal goal of making those national teams and then, and then retire. And then obviously the shoulder changed to that, but were there in, was there any other point? I mean, I know you, you said you kind of take it only three or four months at a time. Was there any other point where you were kind of thinking, should I still be doing this? Yeah, I think um, with me too, like I train with younger, especially in, in, in Lethbridge, I, I train with younger people. <laughs> and so it's, it's hard to see how, they recover and how quickly they bounce back. And, uh, and so that, that just, it's not, it's not like you want to like quit because of that, but it's just like, it's kind of hard to see that. And you just, you just notice that. And I know like, cause I'm 28 and that's not like, there are many, many, many swimmers that are amazing that are older than me and do fantastic. And so I'm not <laughs> saying that we're like old fossils or anything, but when you contrast like myself to somebody who's 18, it can be just day after day after day. It's, it is gets a little bit hard and you start to think like, am I too old to, for this? Like, it's just, it's just different. Um, and, and with the shoulder, yeah. Like if it, if it, I don't know, like it, I can swim pain free now with it. If it had gone on for longer that it was like, yeah, you need to get surgery or else this isn't gonna start feeling any better or, um, I don't know, things like that, then maybe I would have um, considered stopping. But uh, yeah, there's always, I don't know, I can't say that I don't think about like, this is this, like, this is too hard. And I often think like, this is so hard, and it's too hard, and that there's not enough payoff for it. There's not enough like, um, good things in terms of of, of times and, and getting best times because I haven't gotten a best time for, for like four years. Right. And so, or five years, I guess now. Um, and, and so I think that just viewing it in a more holistic way of like, okay, but like, what are you getting out of swimming? Uh, and, and if you look back five years from now, will you be happy that you, that you retired at this point, or would you be kind of annoyed that you didn't see things through to, the end for the the end of the quadrennial kind of a thing so once I started thinking about things more in in a broader perspective it, it didn't 
really, um, I didn't, I can't say that I seriously considered uh, retiring uh, because, um, yeah, I think I would have been pretty mad at myself <laughs> in years to come. <laughs> future Rachel. <laughs> so you, you do train with younger swimmers and, um, you are 28. Um, how have you, what is your training look like now? And are you doing the same things as these 18 year olds you're swimming with? Uh, yeah, my, we do do generally the same kinds of things. Um, there's not, not very often that we'll break, break away into different, different groups. Cause right now it's just, um, me and, and two other, two other young, young men, um, that I'm training with. And, and we're both like, we're all sort of hundred focused swimmers. So we do a lot of the same stuff and I, it's very different than the stuff that I did in, uh, when I was training at SMU. And I think that that is serving me well at this point in this stage of my career it's a little, uh, it's not as much volume as swimming. And I think for when I was, when I was younger and, and when I was in university, that that was probably a good thing for me. But now that I'm older, I think that this, this sort of more high intensity, shorter stuff is, is better. And, and, and also back then um, when I was in university, I was much more focused on the 200, whereas now it is very like all I do and, and focused on is the, is the 100 and, you know, if the 50 were in the Olympics, I would make my life a lot better, but, <laughs> um, but it's not. So I would say the 50, but yeah, so we do do uh, the much of the same things. Their weight program is pretty different than, than mine though. I will say that that is where things um, differ quite a bit. Um, but yeah, we do most of the same stuff when we train. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I, I don't think I asked this question, but this you answered what I wanted to know, which was just kind of generally what your training looks like. And if it's changed as, as you have aged and matured in the sport, which it sounds like it has. Yeah. Um, and was that by your design or by someone else's design, like, like a coach or mm. someone? Yeah, I think it's just a product of, of where I've decided to be. Um, I, at SMU, again, it was, it was really high volume. We were swimming, 10 times a week had weights, dry land, cardio, all on top of that. And then here we're, we're swimming eight times a week and lifting three times and, and doing, I do a little bit of extra biking and things like that. Um, so, uh, and, and, and again, the meters, meters are much, much, um, much less than, than what I used to do on a day-to-day -day basis at SMU. And uh, yeah, I think I, it, it, yeah, it was my, it's been, kind of me you know driving the bus here with uh i i chose to be here because i think that this is the right choice for yeah where my my body is at physically uh it wasn't peter kind of trains everybody like this so it was a good place for me to be and peter and i are on are on really good like coach athlete relationship terms so uh, mentally i think that too uh, like a uh, the mental thing and the physical, like physical is one thing, but for me mentally, like being on, on having a coach, um, that I'm on the same page with is, is really important for, especially like having gone through the Olympic process. I know that I need that. And I know, I know, knew that Peter was the right choice. So moving back here was, it was cause I was in Calgary and training with more distancey kind of people there and moving back here to be with Peter with his more short kind of sprinting oriented group was was yeah for sure a conscious decision to be back with that kind of training and to be back with um that kind of mental sort of area <laughs> yeah definitely um and so then to kind of bring that full circle looking forward um in in the month of may now <clears throat> which we're like uh four hours away from or something yeah. um you, you know, obviously you were preparing for the trials in a couple of weeks. Now that's pushed back. What will the month of May look like now for you uh, physically? And what will May look like for you mentally? Right. We, I, I need to still talk with Peter about that. He's going through the process of, of, yeah, reevaluating things, um, lining up the the training cycles and everything like that, and and making some pretty big decisions. I don't. I I completely 
trust Peter with that kind of stuff. So I, and, and my weight coach too, kind of relies on what Peter wants in, in, in the water and, and what he wants to see. And then we adjust weightlifting accordingly. Um, so, so for, for me, I'm just right now, just kind of, you know, sitting back and waiting until Monday to, <laughs> to, to see what, what the next uh, couple of weeks will, will look like. Uh, and this extension, I think, I think that it will probably be just um, an extension of what we've been doing for the past two or three weeks. We've been very uh, focused on, on doing race prep and, and, doing race prep every single day and just getting, getting the confidence behind that. of like, yeah, you know, like what to do, how that feels, how to adjust kind of a thing. So I, I imagine it'll probably be a couple more weeks of that <laughs> and then ho- hopefully taper time. <laughs> uh, so that, that would be my guess. I'm not hundred percent sure though. And, and mentally again, it's going to be just that decompressed time. And then uh, for the next few days, and then just start to look forward to things kind of, like, it's okay to be frustrated. I'm not somebody that definitely says like, I'm one of those, like, you have to be happy all the time. (laughs) It's just so unrealistic. And so I think it's fair for everybody, the Canadian swimmers right now to be super frustrated and and annoyed about things. Uh, I know that I am. And um, I, I'm just going to try to compartmentalize that, uh, put it in a bit of a little box and, and go to training and try to feel light and, and, and bring the best that I can that day. Like I do lots of talks with, with younger athletes, uh, through, through zoom and things like that. And, and just mentorship stuff. And I say like, even if you don't, you're not hundred percent that day, if you're only 60% or even like, hopefully not like 40%, bring a hundred percent of that 60%, you know, like just do what you can. Like, even if you're not feeling the best, like just, just do what you can. And that's, that's been sort of my mantra for this year is just doing what you can, don't make things harder than they have to be. Don't put more pressure on yourself than you need to. It doesn't all need to be perfect all the time. So I think that that's just giving yourself a bit of a break is, is, is the way that I'll be moving forward for the next couple of weeks anyways. Yeah. Well, Rachel, I really appreciate you taking the time on your Friday evening to sit down and chat with me. Um, Any parting thoughts for our audience moving forward uh, before we sign off tonight? Ah, uh, oh, well, I think pressure's on. Um, I think <laughs> just for everybody, uh, dealing with this kind of stuff is, is, is nobody's gone through this before. I don't think it matters. Everybody's going to like respond to things differently, have different coping mechanisms. So don't think that if somebody's doing something else other than you, that you're doing something wrong, Every, everybody's going to have bad days. Everybody's going to have good days. So I think it's important that we don't, compare ourselves too much to each other uh and gets get too worked up about that uh it's good to get ideas from each other but don't don't worry if you, if your coping mechanisms are different than somebody else's and you need to cry like all day long or take like a three and a half hour nap that's totally fine <laughs> don't worry about it kind of a thing so um uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel we thought the tunnel was a little bit shorter but now it's a little bit longer so um but we're we're getting there we'll get there and 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 there's still a future in front of us and 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 we'll we'll get we'll get through this yeah You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.